In this Blender tutorial, we will cover basic rotation, combinations of rotation commands, resetting rotations, rotating along the global versus local axis, and rotation pivot points. This has seriously got to be everything you could possibly want to know about rotating objects in Blender. We will be working with objects in object mode, but most of the concepts work with rotating selected geometry in edit mode as well. By the way, my name is Brandon, and thank you so much for being here. The simplest way to rotate objects in Blender is to left-click an object to select it and press R on the keyboard. Then move the mouse around and the object rotates. When the object is rotated as we want it, left-click the mouse to lock it into place, or press Enter on the keyboard to lock it. If we have started our rotation and want to cancel the operation before we've locked it into place, we can right-click instead of left-clicking and the rotation will be canceled. If we already locked it into place, we will have to use the Control z or Command-Z on a Mac command to undo it. Blender is using the current view to define the rotation angle. That is, unless we tell it to do otherwise. And by the way, the models I use in each of the following examples are available on Blender Market and linked to in the description. Please consider supporting their awesome creators. If we want to restrict rotation to a single global axis, such as the Z axis, we can press R and then the letter of the axis to rotate along. Pressing RZ and moving the mouse will rotate only along the Z axis. Press enter or left click to lock in the rotation. We could use X or Y instead of Z to choose their respective axes instead. This is using the global axis, and I will explain the difference between global axis and local axis in just a bit. So far, none of this rotating has been very precise. Let's say we wanted to rotate an object exactly 45 degrees. We can press R and then 4, 5, and the object will rotate 45 degrees. Press enter or left click to lock the rotation into place. Of course, the number 45 can be changed to however many degrees we want it to rotate. If we want this to rotate in the opposite direction, we press R minus sign and then 45. It will rotate 45 degrees in the negative direction. But the minus sign does not have to go before the number of degrees. It can also be entered after. Let's say we pressed R45 and then realized we actually wanted to rotate it the other way. We can now press the minus key and it reverses the direction as long as we haven't locked the rotation into place by pressing enter or by left clicking. In fact, as long as we haven't locked it into place, we can press the minus key additional times and each time we press it, the direction will be inverted. Again, this is all based on the view angle and we might not want that. We can combine these two tricks into a single command in Blender. Let's say we wanted the object to rotate exactly 30 degrees along only the Z axis. We can press R, Z, 30, and it will rotate 30 degrees along only the global Z axis. We could press R, X, 45, and it will rotate 45 degrees only on the X axis. We can also throw the minus sign into this command to reverse the direction. And again, it doesn't really matter what order we do all of this in, as long as the R is at the beginning, and of course, enter or left click to confirm the rotation is at the end. So if we press RY minus 90, the object rotates 90 degrees in the negative direction along the Y axis. We could also press R, 90, Y minus and get the same result. The order of the operations is interchangeable. Another helpful thing, let's say we pressed R, 90, Y to rotate 90 degrees along the Y axis, but then realize we meant to do this along the X axis. I do this all the time. We don't need to undo the entire thing. We can simply press X before we've locked in the rotation and it will change to the X axis. Want to change it back to the Y axis? Press Y again, or Z for that matter to switch to the Z axis. Nothing is locked into place until we press enter or left click to confirm. I'll show you a handy tool called free rotation. If we select an object and quickly double tap R on the keyboard, we enter what's called free rotation or trackball rotation. The rotation is not restricted to any axis or to the current view. If you want a really random rotation, do this. Move the mouse around a lot and then left click or press enter to lock it in. I can't really call this a full tutorial on rotation if I don't cover the rotate tool from the toolbar. I never use this because I find keyboard shortcuts are always way faster in Blender. But click on the rotate tool in the left side toolbar. This rotation gizmo appears around the selected object. We click and drag on these lines to rotate on different axes. Red rotates along the X axis, green along the Y axis, and blue along the Z axis. The white circle will rotate from the current camera view. One important tip you might want to know is how to reset an object's rotation entirely. Let's say we've rotated this object a few times and it's totally screwed up. We just want to start over. Select the object and press Alt-R on the keyboard. Magically, the rotation has been entirely reset. 
that's Alt-R, to reset the rotation. We can view an object's current rotation and make manual adjustments in the sidebar menu. That's the menu that toggles open and closed on the right side of the viewport when we press in on the keyboard. With a single object selected, choose the item tab, and we see an area displaying the object's current rotation along all three axes. We can adjust these as we want or reset them all to zero. If you run into a problem where the object's rotations are all set to zero, but it's not back to its original rotation, it's probably because you've applied the object's rotation at some point. I don't have an easy solution for you if that's the case. See, if we have an object that's rotated and then press Control A on the keyboard and apply rotation, this resets the object's default rotation to how it is currently rotated. Now, this is the new default rotation. There are definitely reasons to do this, but don't apply a rotation unless you mean to because it's difficult to reset afterwards. Okay, let's talk about global versus local axes and rotation. These are terms and concepts you'll hear periodically when learning Blender. You may also hear global versus local location, coordinates, etc. But I'll focus on rotation to demonstrate what the hell this means. In a Blender scene, there is only one X, one Y, and one Z axis for the entire scene. Z is up and down, X is left and right, depending on your view, I suppose, and Y is front and back. That's it. These are known as the global axes. They are the same for all objects in the scene, but each object can have its own orientation within a scene. Let's rotate this object a little. What is straight up and down for this object is not aligned with straight up and down for the entire scene. Straight up and down for this object is what's known as the local Z axis. The object also has a local X axis that is not aligned with the global X axis, and the same, of course, for the Y axis. These directions are known as the local axes. If I tell Blender to rotate this object along the Z axis, it will rotate it like this. Hopefully you can see the blue line straight up and down that's showing the axis of rotation. This is global rotation, as if the object has not previously been rotated. That may be what we want, but we may want to rotate it like this, along the local Z axis. Let me show you how to do that, but first, a like on this video if it's been helpful would be hugely appreciated. Thank you so much. To rotate an object along the local axis, we press R on the keyboard to rotate, and when we choose an axis, we press the letter for that axis twice. So if we press R to rotate and Z to restrict along the Z axis, it rotates like this. If we press Z again, it switches to the local axis and rotates like this. Pressing Z a third time will remove the Z axis restriction, and we can just keep cycling through this. Z for global axis, Z for local axis, Z to unrestrict, etc. And of course this will work with the X and Y axes as well, but you get the point. I think I'm officially done saying axis for today. Let's move on. We can't talk about rotating objects in Blender without touching on rotation pivot points. When an object rotates, it needs to be told what to rotate around. That is a point in 3D space known as the pivot point. Look at these two objects rotating. They are both rotating along the same axis, but they clearly look different. All objects rotate around their pivot point, but what and where the pivot point is can be changed. This becomes even more important when rotating multiple objects as you may want them to rotate like this or like this. By default, a single object will rotate around its own origin point. That's the small orange dot you see on objects while in object mode. When we create a primitive object, the origin point is in the center. But as we model and build upon the object, that origin point may not still be centered inside the object. Here's a little bonus tip. If you ever need to recenter the origin point of an object to the center of its geometry, do this. Select the object, go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. The origin point is now recentered within the object. At the top of the 3D viewport, we have this drop down box that if you hover over, you see it's labeled Transform Pivot Point. For a single object, individual origins, median point, and active element will all do the same thing, and that is rotate the object around the object's origin point. We see an option for 3D cursor, and this can be pretty handy. When this is selected, the object will rotate around the 3D cursor instead of the object's origin point. And so far in this tutorial, we've only been rotating a single object in Blender. Let's say we had all of these objects selected. We do that by holding shift and left clicking them, and we wanted to rotate all of them. Well, ask yourself, what exactly is it that we want to do? Do we want to rotate them all around our scene, or do we want to have each of them rotate around their individual origin points like this? This pivot point selection box is how we tell Blender to rotate these objects. If individual origins is selected, each object will rotate individually around its own origin point. 
if median point is selected, the objects will rotate as one around a point in 3D space that is the average of all of the selected objects origin points. When we have more than one object selected, one object, and that's generally the last object we selected, will be outlined in a different color and that's known as the active object. If we choose active element for our pivot point, all selected objects will rotate as one around the active object's origin point. Selecting 3D cursor is probably obvious. It will rotate all the objects around the location of our 3D cursor. This is handy because the 3D cursor can be placed anywhere we want it to be in a number of ways. The simplest of which is by holding shift and right clicking somewhere in the scene. The bounding box center is a technical option I don't even fully understand. In every scenario I find, it has the same effect as median point. The next video you should watch is probably the one YouTube is placing on your screen right now. Become a subscriber to get notified when my next tutorial comes out and find tons of Blender tips and resources at brandonsdrawings.com. Please support the creators in the description and stay creative.